Okay, the solution for this example, firstly we need to set up a, a helper here. So what we've done is we've got a blank set of um, cells here. I could refer here, but you'll see all we've done is we've just created a copy just so that they line up nicely. So what we need to do is create some sort of a helper that goes in this case from one to three and then it must stay three the whole way through. So it must look here. You can use the minimum function, but in this case we're going to use an if function. And what we're going to say is Excel if this cell over here is less than that cell over there. Now I'm just think of my dollar signs. This here I'm going to copy down, so I don't want it moving from row 23. So I'm just going to put a dollar sign in front of the 23. And for the life, I need it to move down, but it's not allowed to go left or right. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the B. So if this cell is less than that cell, then just make use of that cell. And again, I need it to always look at row 23. If it's not, then I want it to look at that cell, and I must always look at column B. So when I say OK, that says a 1, let's just copy it across and see if it's working. So it seems to be working there. Let's copy it down. So let's choose one of them. There's a 10 here there, so it goes 1, 2, 3, 9, 10, and it keeps rolling. So it looks like it's doing the right thing. Now we need to create the offset. So I'm just going to go a little bit down here. So in this cell over here, I'm going to start with the offset first. And I know it must be an offset. So the reference, I'm going to say go look up here. Okay, structurally this is set up in such a way that they line up exactly. So I'm going to leave no dollar signs there. Rows and columns, I'm going to put zero. Height, I'm just going to put a one. Width must be minus whatever it sees in that cell there. Okay, and again, we don't have to worry about the dollar signs. If I say OK, we get a number, that's fine, but we mustn't forget to sum it so that as we copy across, it correctly does it. And then what we need to do is divide it, but we need to divide it not by this, but by the original laugh. So I can either look here or here. I'm going to look at the original, so I'm going to click over here. When we copy it down, I do want it to move down, so the rows must change. But copying it left and right, I can't have it looking at column C, column D. So I'm going to just change that and put a dollar sign there. So that's saying 307. Let's copy it across. Okay, and you'll see I've got a check cell here, which seems to be doing the correct thing. Let's copy it down. Okay, so most of these are seem to be correct. What this is doing is working out my total depreciation and all the checks doing is comparing total depreciation to total spend. You'll notice there's one item that's warning me that there's still a shortfall. If we look at that item we'll see it's got a 20 year lifespan and it actually only starts being spent here. So actually that's correct. After this period there is still a little bit more depreciation we require. Just to show you how you could then create the fixed asset bucket, I've got an opening balance of zero. My purchases just add up how much we purchase in that year. My depreciation subtracts the depreciation for that year. There's a closing balance, which adds them up. And then the bucket starts again. In this case, at the end of the 20 years, there's still a little bit left over because of this one here. Let's just change this and make this rather five years. And what you should see is that my bucket get ends up at zero. So this looks like it's correctly modeling fixed assets, depreciation, and the different lifespans.